Hello everyone, I'm Claire Marie B and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to be taking you through my May bullet journal setup. The theme this month is lavender. I've wanted to do this for a while now. I know it's been done. I know lots of people do it, but purple is my favorite color. May is my birthday month and I just decided to do it. I've decided to turn the lavender into a print. What's a little different for me this month is I would normally draw everything out in pencil first and I'd normally as well if I was doing a print draw things out with a black outline and then have things more coloured in. This month is slightly different as I felt the lavender looked better without any um, black ink around it. I tried out a few different styles um, and also, I found that I didn't really need to draw it all out in advance either, so I just went for it this month, um, which was quite quite pressured for me, really. <laughs> quite daring, huh? Um, yeah, so this is me drawing out all of the lavender. I picked two different shades of lilac in my Tombow set and then my favourite shade of green to do the stalks. I'm building up the pattern across two pages. My last few videos, you might have noticed, I sometimes now do a quote, sometimes don't do a quote, I see how I feel. When I drew this out, I was contemplating a quote and then decided I love it so much as it is at the moment, I'll just leave it as it is. So my plan is across the month, if there's something that I want to put in there, then I will. If not, I'm really happy with how it ended up turning out regardless. So I'm happy to keep it as a print. So once all of the main drawing out is done, I'm going to go over it, as you can see, with some shading just to create um, some, some different tones in there on each of the lavenders. I picked that the sun was shining from a different place <laughs> when I do my shading, so the shading's slightly different on each of them, um, which again, I, I quite like the randomness on the print rather than it being like it's a, it's a field of, of lavender, which clearly it's not. Um, it's just a print of all different lavender. You might have noticed I've left one on the right hand side. There's a specific reason for that, which you'll see very soon. The other thing that I'm going to do with the lavender as well is just put some um, dots all around it just to add a little bit of extra pattern to the page. Often I will do little shapes, circles, stars, but again, without me using uh, the black ink pen, it, it just didn't really go. So I felt that doing a few little dots here and there just added something a little bit extra. So that's what I've done there. For the title of the spread, so, so writing out May, I'm super happy this month to be bringing back the craft paper. I do love using the craft paper and I'd worry that I may do it a bit too, <laughs> a bit too much and I didn't do it last month, so it's coming back out for May. I usually will just write my, um, my months out horizontally. This is a little different for me, trying something different as I always try to do, and I'm doing a vertical May. I've written the letters out in kind of a typewriter style print and then going over them again. I do love these Sakura Jelly Rolls. They are a great pen. I just find sometimes the ink can be a little bit consistent and you've got to go over things and go back in and wait for it to dry and then go over it again, which isn't really a, a pain. Somebody who was was doing some lettering instruction and tips, something that always stuck with me was when they said, you need to imagine when you're doing lettering that you're not writing, you're actually drawing, you're drawing the letters more than anything else. And because I, I think of that a lot, I don't really mind going over it with the, with the pens again and over and over again to layer up the ink, just like you would do if you were drawing something. I decided to do some straight lines to create shading in the actual letters, which I felt made the letters pop a little bit more. So I'm just cutting down the craft paper to size to then stick that on the side. I will use my trusty double-sided tape. I sometimes get asked, what am I, what do I use to stick those down? I did first of all start with um, Prit stick, like a glue stick that buckled the paper underneath. So I quickly moved on to, <laughs> to double-sided tape. So I, I do actually use a Prit tape for that. And onto my calendar spread. 
I decided to reverse the lettering and do black ink on white on this page and keep exactly the same style. So the typewriter style font and shade in with the diagonal lines up to the right. I wanted to make things nice and simple for myself this month, so I decided to draw out all of the boxes using rulers. I learned my lesson <laughs> from last month. I'm sure I'll draw individual boxes again in the future, but this month I decided to have a little change. Of course I'm doing my trusty Dutch door and putting some lavender down the side of that. My to-do list will be on the right hand side on the next page where I've really got into a habit of doing my planning page. It's good because I can plan my social media content and plan what I need to get done for the month. Although I have noticed a little trend in myself with my planning that I seem to add things to this to-do list of stuff I know I need to do or I don't want to forget about but then at the end of the month I seem to have a lot left so it's not like I definitely need to get those things done that month so I'm thinking I might need to create another spread somehow of like a master to-do list or things to remember and not keep copying it from month to month because it's getting a little bit boring now that I've had some of the same things on the list for the last three months which does make me say, well, if it's been there for three months, does it really need doing? <laughs> and I'm sure everybody else <laughs> would question that too. For my titles across the top and then for the to-do page, I decided to use craft paper for that and use the white ink, again using all of the same font. And then I'm putting the numbers of the days of the week throughout and I've put some little uh, lavender dots in each of the boxes to do that as well. I did contemplate colouring a few of the boxes in, but I felt there was enough colour on this page. Of course, no spread would be complete for me without washi tape. I dug out my sage green spotted washi tape, which I thought was really perfect for this, and some of the fawn colours as well. So on the flip side of the Dutch door, this is my Instagram planner page, my notes section where I might just uh, do a little bit of a, a brain dump on either my content or things that are really important or I need to remember. If I write all of those things on the days of the week that it happens, then I've got to scroll through my journal to try and dig those things out and highlight any really important things for the future which I guess is a fun job in itself. However, if I have a notes section on a page like this, if there's any key notes for the month or something that I want to remember or summarise, it's a much easier place to come back to. I also track my growth on here, so my Instagram growth. So if you uh, don't follow me on Instagram, feel free to come over and, and check me out there. I post every spread that I'm doing um, on there and a bit extra content as well. And it's a really, really great community. So if you do love bullet journaling, feel free to, to come over to there and, and drop me a message on there because it'd be great to see what you create as well. The next spread is my trackers. On the left hand side, this is going to be my mood tracker. And on the right hand side, it's going to be my habits. Notebook therapy, I'm not sure if you're aware of them, that's who the stencil is from. I saw a really great reel that they did on Instagram where they created a mood tracker in this way. I thought it was a, I thought it was a great idea. So I decided to recreate that for this month. Each of those little segments will be colored in for a different day of the month in a relevant colour. I've stripped back my mood tracker into happy, productive, and also um, kind of meh 
really. And that's that's how I word it. <laughs> I think I've said before, I'm really quite a positive person. So the meh doesn't happen very often. But I, what my mood tracker has turned into is a way of really capturing if I'm being productive. And that's what I want to measure and challenge myself on being. I, I'm my happiest when I feel like I've been really productive. So that's why I like to keep a track of that. It's not because I like to focus on when am I grumpy and are there any trends to that? I think <laughs> I think everybody knows that there'll be specific trends to being grumpy. Um, and I know some people will really use a mood tracker for a lot of other health reasons as well. For me, it's about um, being more productive and um, yeah, being super organized and, um, and being able to, to track that. I've started to do double colouring on my mood trackers as well, where I can highlight that I'm happy that day and I was productive. And I found that that was, uh, that's something that really appeals to me as well. On the right hand side, the boxes are for my daily habits. And at the bottom, that's my weekly and monthly habits. Over the page, this is my memories page. Previously and in all my earlier bullet journal posts that I did and my, my plan with me, you will have seen I always did a, a Ponceve, which is my brain dump page. I took that out because it was a blank page and it tended to end up staying like that. Whereas the memories page for me of the month, I have a cute little printer, which I love. And I'll print out a couple of pictures for the month um, or my favorite pictures for the month. I'll also track word of the day, which I've really enjoyed in that top right box. And I'll also write down TV films that I've watched that month. Um, if I've read a book, I'll put the book in there as well or on this page and I'll just fill it with all the happy things that have happened that particular month as, as, as my style of journal and diary really, which is what I've loved that this has evolved into and that I just love that you can make a bullet journal whatever you want it to be. I think it's fantastic and so there's such an opportunity to create. That's why I love it so much. This is my final spread, which is one line a day. I started doing this in January and I have really enjoyed it. I'm still on the fence. I almost feel like because I've been doing it, I can't stop doing it. However, I don't know that I'm getting the best out of it. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm keeping it for now because I am enjoying it and it's nice to look back on. And here's my final flip through. Thank you so much for watching today. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please don't forget to click like and subscribe so that you'll be notified of my future content. Do come over to Instagram and tag me on any of your posts over there. Hope you have a wonderful May and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.